What's going on today? My name is Babru and welcome back to my channel. Today I am standing here with Kara Edwards. Hi. And who are you the voice of? Oh my goodness. Uh, so probably the most the most known voice would definitely be from Dragon Ball Z. I voiced Goten and Videl. Uh, from Heaven's Lost Property, I voiced Nymph. From um, Ragnarok, I voiced Chihiro. From, I don't know. There's somewhere there's a list online, I assure you. But I've, I think I've done something around like 140 or 150 roles in different uh, animes. And also uh, video games. I'm in Smite and I'm in Battleborn and I'm in a whole bunch of Dragon Ball Z video games and stuff. That's uh, certainly a reputable resume you've got there. And uh, can we get like a little bit of a sample? Oh my goodness. Uh, so Goten, Goten has changed recently, which I got a lot of flack for. Um, but I really feel in my heart that Goten was supposed to be more... Um, I didn't like him. He never sounded like a little boy. It was very gravelly and kind of a weird voice. So um, I felt that he was really meant to be. And it's also because I had a kid and he's a boy. And so now I watch him and I think of him when I'm voicing Goten. So Goten's gone a lot higher recently. And he's also kind of because he's Goku's kid. So he's a little silly and he's not always bright, but he loves to do bad things. Yeah, and then Videl is my actually my own voice. Videl is actually my totally my own voice, except for now in Super, Videl has become super se like Stepford, and it's a little strange for me. Um, and so, because I'm used to Videl being like the tough me, like she's brave and she's a superhero, and she was one of the first female superheroes, and definitely in anime, but also like in animation. And so, like I I would want them to go back to her being like awesome, because right now she's like. Oh, I'm pregnant. I should probably sit down and rest. Um, so I'll be excited when Videl starts like beating people up again. Yeah. Not that I don't still love her. Actually, that was my favorite thing about Videl growing up watching Dragon Ball Z was um, how just totally badass she was. And she reminded me a lot of my older sister, actually. Oh, nice. um, she, she had the kind of the same personality and attitude, like kind of like take the world by her own hands kind yeah. of thing she was and i always say like videl is me like videl was me and and she and i have kind of gone through similar processes in our lives like um she very much uh like she is tough but she's also insecure and she really just wants this boy to like her and um i think she's the most three-dimensional character in the dragon ball series where she really kind of has a story arc and she also gets like actually beat up and hurt by spopovich and it shows that she's you know like she can get hurt and she's not magical but she is awesome because she learns to fly and she gets to do the same like i i'm so in love with videl and so yeah i'm ready for like videl's awesomeness to like come full circle even though she's an awesome mom and i'm happy with that but yeah bring back videl <laughs> i totally agree um so in terms of katsukan is this your first one or have you been to a katsukan before no, this is my very first Katsukan. In fact, I had no idea where I was going or where I was flying into um, because they told me um, the city and I am geographically challenged. And so uh, it wasn't until I got to the airport that I started like connecting dots and figured out where in the world I was. And this is beautiful. Like National Harbor is gorgeous. And um, the, the con has been like, this is the best cosplay I have ever seen at any convention. And I've been to a lot of conventions. And so um, the cosplay here is mind blowing. It's so good. Wow. Uh, actually, I agree with you on that point. Uh, yesterday, I saw this man in a giant Reinhardt costume. I'm, I'm not sure if yeah, you caught yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, like, unbelievable. And how is he even operating that? Like, I know, I studied him. Right? His butt's phenomenal. It's crazy. No, seriously, man. That guy works out. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, so, what's, your, what, what's the biggest takeaway from your career in uh, voice acting? What, what's, what's kind of like the thing that makes you f get up in the morning and go, my life is pretty awesome. Okay, this is going to sound cliche because you're interviewing me right now. Um, the fans, and that's a super real answer. Uh, I do a lot of different genres in voiceover from commercial and narration and magazines and different things. Um, in anime and video games especially, like you get these amazing fans and you get to make real connections with people, which in voiceover you don't always get to do. People who just do audiobooks don't get to come out and actually meet pe the people that listen to their audiobooks. They wish they could. Um, so I think the, the biggest thing is just the connections that I've made with other voice actors, with the directors, with fans, with um, the community that has been built around anime specifically. Um, by far, I mean, that's what, when I'm 100 years old and looking back, I'll be like, that's been the best and luckiest part of my career is just getting to meet really great people. So, ting.
Oh, fantastic yeah, answer. answer. No, it was a great answer. It's an honest answer. So. Yeah, it was definitely a great answer. Um, so what do you, for some like closing remarks, what do you have to say to people who want to aspire to kind of live the life that you're currently living as a, as a voice actor or maybe even a, like an actor or maybe a news anchor or anything like that, anything in the media? Yeah, so we actually just, I just finished a two-hour panel about voice acting and um, specifically in video games. And I think the number one thing to take away is, I know another cliche, don't give up. But it's true. Um, training, 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 and more training. And continue to train throughout your career no matter how successful you get. Um, the number one class you want to take is improv. That'll help you to break out of your shell, develop a character, make a commitment, drop the embarrassment. Um, acting classes in general, scene study is really important. Then voiceover classes. There's a lot of really reputable places. Um, before you study with anybody, make sure to email your favorite voice actor and ask them if this person is reputable because you want to make sure you study with someone who's going to help your career and not just take your money. Um, so uh, training, training and training. And seriously, if it's in your heart and it's your passion, you got to keep fighting for it because it's a tough industry, but it's worth it. It is worth it. Definitely. And I actually... Uh forgot to ask this question but there's a thing i like to ask all the voice actors and voice actresses i've interviewed over the years and that's I'm so one allergic to cedar by the way and we're like surrounded by cedar so oh my sorry. goodness i'm actually allergic to to bark uh, and like yeah. myself Are which you? weirdly yeah and i grew up in missouri okay so, so it was yeah, kind of terrible but anyway um so i asked this to kyle a bear last year kyle is like my brother i love that man i love that man <laughs> and i asked him one did you grow up liking the sound of your own voice? Two, if not, what did you do to kind of overcome that? No, I did not. Um, I always have had a high-pitched voice, and I always thought I sounded kind of silly. And so um, that's how I got my first job, is they were like, do you want to do radio? And I'm like, uh, no. Um, and then kind of just embracing, like, you know, because I had to hear my own voice because I did radio for 11 years, so I had to hear my own voice every single morning from 6 to 10 a.m., um, and, and I think I just became very comfortable with it. And, you know, even now there's times I'm like, oh, like I, I don't like watching the, I think I can always do better. So I'm really hard on myself and I'm like, I should have done that better. But, um, you know, you do like when I'm in the booth, I feel really confident and it's a lot of it is about learning your instrument and learning your vocal placement. And once you're confident that like, I know I can do this and I know I can do that. Um, then you kind of do. It just makes it more, I don't know if you ever fall in love with your own voice. You just kind of get really confident in knowing that you know what you're doing. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for agreeing to the interview. I've really enjoyed it. Well, uh, if you want to see more people like Kara at conventions, make sure you come to Kazukon. This has been Kazukon 2017, and I'm signing out.